Today's math lesson for tomorrow, May uh, the 3rd, 2000, is courage when facing a new task. It's coming from Joshua, the first chapter in the ninth verse, and it reads as follows. Have not I commanded thee, be strong, be of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed or discouraged or intimidated, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now, let me set the tone for this, for the background for today's lesson. It occurs when, uh, during the time, uh, nearing the end, uh, when Moses was leading the people, the nation of the young nation of Israel out of Egypt, and they have gotten almost to the promised land. And Moses was dead. He had died. He'd gone off the scene. But Joshua was the next in command, and he was uh, being a little hesitant about uh, taking over the reign of leadership um, after the death of Moses. So we'll see here that God is encouraging Moses, uh, Joshua to be courage and to be strong. And he, it's the first verse it talks about says this, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, come to pass, that the Lord God spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, and this is where he tells him, that My servant Moses is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, that and all this people unto the land which I have given them, even to the innate children of Israel. And he goes on to tell him what all that's going to be his. He, he paints a very clear picture. He takes it and tells him. He said, Now, every place where the sole of your feet shall trod, I have given it to you as I said to Moses. He said, What he's telling him that now, what I told Moses, I'm telling you now. And just like I was with Moses, I'm with you. So he said, From the, now, the other place, he said, Now, listen, he, he lays it out very clearly. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great Euphrates River, and all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sun sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast, and there shall not be any able to stand before you uh, all the days of your life, as I am, as I was with Moses, Joshua, I am with thee. And I will not fail thee, neither will I forsake you. He again, he tells him in verse 6, I want you to be strong. I want you to be of good courage. For unto the people that shall divide unto all inheritance, which I have sworn to their fathers. He again, he tells him, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe and do all according to the law. But he tells him, now I want you to obey the law. Don't deviate from it one way or the other. Just like Moses was commanded, he obeyed the law. I want you to do the same thing. Do not turn from the right or the left, but thou may prosper wherever thou goest. And what he was telling him now, out you will prosper if you obey me. And don't take things into your own hand to try to do what you think is right. And that brings into uh, focus Proverbs when it said, Lean not into thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge, acknowledge him. So what it's saying, you do things my way and everything will be all right. And he told him, so now I don't want you to take the, the book. He's talking about the Holy Scriptures. I don't want you to meditate on it day and night. I want you to stay in the word of the Scriptures. And you will be all right. 
that message is applicable to us today just as it was then and it will be forevermore now as i just said that uh, this lesson takes place uh, after the death of moses when god had uh, or had appointed uh, joshua to be moses successor and uh, he to god being all knowing he knew that Moses was not going to get into the promised land. He also knew had Joshua there as Moses' right hand. So he was studying and learning what to do, how to lead, and just do it as Moses said do. And he was good, giving him clear instructions on what to do and how to do. And uh, he was also saying to him, and Moses, uh, my Joshua, you're very capable of doing this. I just want you to be brave. Do not lack self-confidence and your ability to lead these people. You don't have to rely on your own understanding because I'm with you. I'm right here. I will not leave you neither will I forsake you. Just like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you because I love you just as well as I does Mo. I did Moses. See, I'm no respected person. I'm God. I love everybody. I'm going to treat all of you the same. So, if I can use this word, put your shoes on and let's go to lead these people across uh, the Jordan. Now, it really brings back to mind that when God called Moses, he was hesitant. Whatever Moses was come back with an excuse, God had an answer. Same thing, God has an answer for, Mo for Joshua. He just had to encourage Joshua to get up and have that self-confidence that I can do this and uh, we see that a lot of times we in our own endeavor uh, we fails a lot of times not because God left us because we lack the courage to step out on faith and go on and, and take this first step to doing what God had already asked us to do God knows our abilities and our capabilities more so than we do sometimes we lack the faith to go and do this uh i'm i'm reminded of some other scriptures in in the bible and it talks about deborah and barack god is sending him on a on a giving him a task to do but he lacked the courage and and he sent his messenger deborah to him but still he he, he, he did not have that courage in the end, in the beginning. So uh, he kept on uh, encouraging and he said, finally, he said, well, Deborah, if you go, I'll go. She went with him. That was his support team, but he was, she was sent there by God. God was with both of them and he was successful. And if we can go back to Moses and his, how he became uh, a close confidant of God. Uh, he became a great leader of the nation of Israel. And so for some of, of the people of Israel, Moses was the only leader they knew because many of them died. Now, Joshua was one of, of the 12 spies that were sent by Moses as before they went into the land to spy out the land to see if they could take the land. Joshua and Caleb were the only two that said yes because they looked at the positive side of uh, their ability whereas the other 10 said no we can't be they look that the negative side they had the some fear failures and whereas on the other hand joshua did not till he was discouraged until he got he was uh, a little dismayed or he lacked the courage to take on the leadership when it came his time to lead the people uh, of of uh, Israel cross over into the promised land. That's why God has kept 
telling them, listen, listen, Joshua, I've been with Moses. I'm here with you. You have the ability. You have the know-how. Just get up and go on and lead these people. And he showed him everything, what it was going to be. He told him everything. And whatever, what else come to mind is when God told Noah to go build an ark. Because it had never rained. See, God is way down the road ahead of us. And he told me, look, God, no, I want you to go build that ark. Scripture does not say, but Noah had a conversation of back and forth, the lack and the courage and the obedience. He just, when I mean, God gave him all of the, the instructions on how to build the ark, Noah got busy. Said, if Lord, if you said it's going to rain, this how you want it built, this who you want in there, I'm going to do it. So, uh, from two things from that you can take away is that he had the faith, he obeyed God, <coughs> and he had the courage. So he followed through. So what is the message that I want to convey at this point? If God asks you to do something, take him at his word and remember he's there with you he's there uh, he will not leave you nor will he forsake you and he does not send a soldier to battle without him or her being equipped to do what has to be done why do we do this why does he do this because god is love he's not a god of failure because there is no failure in him and he want all of us to be successful. Then he was preparing uh, Joshua for this position, even during the time when Moses was still alive, because he worked closely with right hand by Moses. And uh, so, as I said earlier, he always prepares his people for the task that he has his hand. You and I and everyone else. And you can see here, Joshua, he he picked up his courage and went on. And, you know, like I say he picked up his courage. And uh but he was not about God uh not encouraging him. Yes, we all need that extra encouragement sometimes. Because we encounter some challenges that really will shake our faith and our courage. So what are we to do when that happens? Hmm. So what do we do? What do we do when we have those challenges or we are facing a task? First, we must, we must have and find the nerve or be brave enough to face the task with self-confidence of being successful. We cannot undertake a task or an endeavor with the fact or the mindset that I'm going to fail. Because if you do, you're, gonna, you're doomed to fail. But I can tell you that, tell you this. A failure, if an opportunity or an upset, up success turned upside down. I used to hear the older people, and my mother would say, "Nothing beats a failure, but a try. You won't fail if you don't try." But we have to go into the endeavor uh, with the attitude, "I am going to be successful." One reason we can take that attitude is that knowing that God is with us and there's no failure in him. Second, we must trust God for his leadership, his guidance, and his ever presence to being with us when we are in this endeavor or when we are taking on this role, whatever the role is. It might be a role of some leadership. 
It might be a call to preach. It might be a call to teach. It just might be a call to be a missionary going into a foreign land of unknown land. But you know what? God is everywhere. The land may be foreign to you, but it's not to God. And he has somebody in that land that he wants you to reach. We, the person who is being sent, have to take the attitude, I'm never alone. God is ever present with me. Okay? Now, the other thing, and we endeavor in this challenge, is to that God has already prepared us for the task before we are chosen for the assignment. And I'm going to take you back to Moses. When he first got his assignment to lead the people, he was telling him, he, Moses, was saying to God, I am a slow of speech. He said, God would come back and say, no, there's so-and-so who speak for you. Why? Why was Moses chosen? God knew who he wanted. He chose Moses. He knew Moses was going to be a great leader. He knew Moses was going to develop the faith in him. Because I can remember very vividly the Red Sea experience when the people were beginning to get nervous and all that he said. I want you to just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Moses prayed and God opened up the Red Sea and all of the people just came through on dry land. And as the people would cross over, God just folded the Red Sea back over and drowned Pharaoh's and his army. God's hand is at work. God's protection and his deliverance is at work. The question I want to ask before I continue giving my list, do you think that God would do this for Moses and not for you and I when we are endeavoring upon a new journey or a new task, a new assignment, and when we face a little difficulty, we, we fail to exercise our faith in God? No, we, that's when... We exercise our faith in God and knowing that he is a deliverer. He is our God. And if we can say like the psalmist since uh, 20 Psalms 27 and 1, and he asked the question, Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid of? And God is the head of our life. If he's the head, he'll take us through. He is the good shepherd. And then he said, the Lord is my shepherd. He provides everything we want and need. And if we need deliverance, he's going to do that. The other point I want to make here is this. God knows our capabilities better than we do. And we, we are operating in God's strength. We can do nothing in our own strength. We are always operating in God's strength. And let's just look at uh, Psalms 31 and 24. And it said, we can take courage in knowing that God is, it is God who's strengthening our heart, our hearts and our mind to take on the challenge without fear. See, Satan's job is to try to put self-doubt in our mind so that we will have a defeatist attitude. But whatever traps Satan say for us, take comfort in knowing this. God, the good shepherd, will lead us around Satan traps and his pitfall. Let me ask this question. Do you think that say, God would give us an assignment and then turn, a, turn us loose just so that we, we will fail? That's just not who God is. God wouldn't do something like that. That would be kind of self-contradictory. When he promised us that he would be with us throughout the assignment. One thing we can take assurances to know. God 
keep his promises. He will do whatever he said he would do. Why? Because he is unchangeable. He's the same today as he was yesterday and back in the Bible days. He will be the same tomorrow and generations to come. We don't have to worry. The last thing we must do, and I encourage us to do, is to read, study, and meditate on God's word. And then we must obey it a commandment. Don't be selective about what commandments we want to want to uh, obey. Do what God's word said itself, because He gives us the indwelling Holy Spirit, who will help us in keeping God's word. God. Being all knowing, he knew that we wouldn't always, uh, some challenges was going to be more difficult than others. But when we rely on God, the Holy Spirit's strength, we will be successful. We will be able to do according to his standards and his moral uh, laws. So, let me say this. And I'm almost finished. We all have a calling on our life. And when God asks us, whom shall I sin and who will go for us? Then we must say like Isaiah, here am I, Lord. Send me. I will go. That is found in Isaiah 6 and 8. Answer the call. Be of good courage. God is with us. He will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. God is true to his word, but we must take him at his word. God is with us. Be of good courage. And therefore, our Lord, we thank you just for being God all by yourself. We thank you for your courageous love, your undying love, and your ever presence. These in the ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, being the first Sunday, I want to uh, come in and minister communion. And it goes with this. And he gave thanks. He break the bread and says, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And as often as you do this in remembrance of me, they took the bread and they did eat. And he did it the same manner when he took the cup and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you do this in remembrance of me. They took the cup and they drank the wine. I want to really close <clears throat> with this song, if I may. Part of it anyway. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me, he died upon the cross, save me. I know it was the blood. He, I know it was the blood for me. 